children, welcome back to another story from Open the Book. I don't know if you remember, because we had this story um, last time that you were in school, but it was about David, the shepherd boy, who was anointed by Samuel the prophet to be the next king of Israel, even though Saul was still king. But Saul had forgotten his promises to God to be a good king. And he turned out not to be a good king. He'd become jealous and he'd become greedy and he even told lies. So in today's story, we're going to hear how jealousy got the better of King Saul and how it affected David. We're going to open the book, the Lion Storyteller Bible, at the story the two kings. This is the story of two kings. This is King Saul, but he'd had an argument with God and Saul wasn't speaking to God anymore. He doesn't want to hear what God said to him. And the king is in a bad mood. Mm. The other king, well, this story is called The Two Kings. I wonder who the other king could be. We've got King Saul and another king. This is David. Does he look as if he could be a king? He doesn't really look like one, does he? He's not wearing a crown or wonderful robes. He looks like the young shepherd who he was, looking after his father's sheep. Yes, he is the other king in the story. Did you guess that? But he's not king yet. It's true, the prophet Samuel had already told David that God had chosen him to be the next king after Saul. But the time wasn't quite ready yet. So David carried on looking after his father's sheep in the fields. David's family was confused. Huh, what's the point of choosing him as king if he's still looking after the sheep, said one brother. King Saul has a son himself. Surely he will be the next king, said another brother. Maybe it was all a mistake, said yet another brother. But David wasn't worried. I don't know what God's plan is, he said. All I know is Samuel said that God had chosen me and I believe him. I'll wait. Meanwhile, Saul, the other king, was feeling even worse. And that meant he behaved badly. Get out of my way, he would roar and shout. And sometimes he even threw things in his anger. When Saul was in such a bad mood like this, all his advisors and servants would try to think of ways of calming him down. Um, your majesty, suggested one of the servants, Perhaps some music could soothe you. That would make you feel better. Let me send for a shepherd boy I know. His name is David and he plays the harp beautifully. Saul shrugged his shoulders. Oh, all right, he said, but it won't make any difference. And so the servant sent for David to come in from the fields with his harp. David bowed to the king and began to play his lovely music. He played songs that reminded Saul that God loved him and that the world was a good place. And soon King Saul began to relax and he even began to smile. The servants and advisors of the king were so relieved at this change of mood, they wanted David to stay there forever and play his music to the king. But David knew that his job was still a shepherd boy. He knew this wasn't what God had planned. 
So he asked permission from King Saul to return to the farm and help his father. And Saul, now that he was feeling better, had forgotten all about David. So he waved his hand and said, yes, of course. David's brothers were surprised to see him coming home again and even more surprised to see him still looking after the sheep. When you went to the palace, we expected you to take over as king, said one brother. Hmm, you'll never be king if you keep coming home again, said another. But David was not worried. No, he said, Saul is our king until God shows me that it's the right time. So he carried on looking after his father's sheep as God had told him to. Meanwhile, King Saul was in a seriously bad mood again. And with good reason this time, his country was under attack from his enemies. Saul ordered all his troops to the battlefield. David's brothers joined the army, but David was too young and had to stay at home. You can guess why. Yes, he was looking after the sheep while the brothers went to war. But after a few weeks, David took some extra food and clean clothes to his brothers who were camped on the battlefield. When he got there, he heard that Goliath, a giant man, giant of a man in the enemy army, was challenging King Saul to fight him. What shall I do? What shall I do? King Saul cried out. Not even my bravest soldiers will fight him. He's huge. King Saul was a very worried king. David was not worried. If God is for us, he said, who can be against us? With God's help, even I could beat that giant. <laughs> David's brothers laughed at him. King Saul laughed at him. <laughs> but still David wasn't worried. He trusted God. And when he faced the giant, Goliath, he swung his sling round and round and whack, he sent a stone flying into the middle of the giant's head and down he fell. Everyone was so excited. The army was excited. The king was excited. Victory, victory. They shouted, God is for us. And all the soldiers cheered. Hooray for David. David, our hero. Everyone wanted to give David rewards and medals and to make him a general in the army. But David knew that that wasn't what God's plan was. So instead, David offered himself to the king to serve him. But I'm afraid Saul's happiness did not last for very long. His bad mood came back. He felt jealous because everyone was cheering for David and calling him the hero. He was afraid that people would next want him to be king instead of Saul. From that day on, Saul, the king, plotted to kill David. Well, we'll have to wait until next week to see what happened next, because this is a very exciting story. But now let's think about David. I expect we would all love to be a hero and to be brave like David. But David was a good shepherd. It was an ordinary job and he was good at it. Day after day, he cared for the sheep and that gave him the courage and the skill to fight and defeat the giant. He had to be, as a shepherd, he had to look out for wolves and bears and anyone who might want to eat the sheep, so he was used to defending them. Remember, David put his trust in God all the time, not just when things were difficult. 
Now let's reflect. Think of something you've learned this week that will help you in the future. It might be in the classroom, something you've been hearing about in class or assembly, maybe something you've learned in the playground. And have you been learning that lesson well, like David did? Please close your eyes. I'm going to say a prayer. And if you want to make it your prayer too, then you can say Amen at the end. Dear God, please help us to prepare ourselves for whatever the future holds by following David's example and learning the lessons of today well. Amen. And now we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I hope you enjoyed that story of the two kings and there'll be a follow-on story after this.